Hello, this is Mr. Buffington, and as you might know, I'm completely nuts, and that's why I'm posting math video after most schools have closed. I should probably do all the math videos during the year and the fun videos during the summer, but anyway, we're going to go ahead and get started with this lesson on terminating and repeating decimals. We will look at terminating decimals. We're going to look at a, a shortcut at the end, and we will talk about repeating decimals as well. So that's what we're going to be looking at. First off, to do any of this, we need to know long division. So a quick review, if you have the question 25 divided by 4 written as a fraction like that, you would write it out in this way and use long division to solve. So you would ask yourself how many groups of 4 are there inside of, and you look at the first digit, 2. Well, there's none. 4 is bigger than 2, so we'll look at the second digit. How many groups of 4 are there inside of 25? Well, there's 6 of them. 6 times 4 is 24, and we subtract. Now, this is when we get into um, decimals. What you can do is put a decimal here, and it's 25.0 divided by 4, which is just normal um, 25 divided by 4, except that we have now a 0 that we can bring down. And then we ask ourselves, how many times does 4 go into 10? Or how many groups of 4 are there in 10? There's 2. We multiply 2 times 4 is 8, subtract, and repeat this process until we get our final answer having a 0. The decimal goes right there, and that's our final answer. So this is long division with finding decimals. It's the basically the next step after finding remainders. And everything that we're going to do today has to do with long division and decimals. So if you've never seen this before, I would check out a video on that first. But if you have seen this before, I apologize for this two minute long review you did not need. Let's go ahead and get, um, get looking at a couple of common fractions and then we'll get into repeating and terminating. First off, this is a common fraction, one half. Inside your head, you might already know what this is as a decimal, but I'm going to show you real quick how you would calculate it. You would write it out like this. Say how many twos are there inside of one? There's none. So now we're going to add that point zero like we did in the previous example. That decimal goes there. How many groups of two inside of 10? Well, there's five. Five times two is 10. We get a zero and our answer is 0 0.5. You might have already known that 1 half was 0 0.5, but that is why, and that's how we do the division to find it. Let's do another couple. 1 fourth, or 1 divided by 4. We'll put that 0 up there because there's no groups of 4 inside of 1. We'll add that point 0 there, knowing that we need that decimal to line up. Now let's pretend the decimals don't exist and say how many groups of 4 inside of 10. Well, there's 2. We multiply, subtract, and whoops, bring down a zero, subtract for our final answer. So that's what you get. One fourth is 0 0.25. Again, a common fraction that you've probably seen before, one quarter is, is 0 0.25. Let's do one more that's maybe not quite as common as the first two, but we'll solve it the same way. Um, we ask how many groups of five inside of 10? Well, there's two. 2 times 5 is 10, and so we get a nice even 0 0.2. So here's what we have. 1 half, 0 0.5, 1 quarter, 0 0.25, and 1 fifth, 0 0.2. All of these are examples of terminating decimals. They're also very common fraction to decimal conversions. So those are ones that you want to keep track of. We call them terminating decimals because they stop right? They end. They eventually get a zero remainder. That's what a terminal, terminating decimal is. What about when we get the number three, like one third? This is also a common fraction, but it's a little bit different. Let me show you what happens when we divide this. Again, we can't fit, there's no three groups of three inside of one. One is smaller than three. So we're going to move along. How many groups of three inside of 10? Well, there's three of them. Three times three is nine. And when we subtract, we get a one. Now you may notice a pattern here. Now, how many threes inside of 10? Well, there's three. Three times three is nine, and that leaves us with 10. 
you notice that this is a pattern that will continue forever because there will always be three groups inside of 10. And no matter how many times we do this, we're going to end up with 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3 repeating forever. So to, to write this out, instead of writing out an infinite number of threes, we can put a line above whatever portion of that decimal is repeating. So we can put it over the three to indicate that that three is repeating forever. This is called a repeating decimal. So there are two types of decimals we're talking about today, repeating decimals and terminating decimals. Okay, terminating decimals stop repeating decimals continue to repeat over and over and over. And they may repeat one number like this, or they might have a repeating pattern, but either way they, they repeat infinitely. So we use that line to kind of indicate that. All right, here are a couple more fractions. We've got two fifths, which is um, two divided by five, and we would solve it in this way and get 0 0.4. That's another example of a terminating decimal. I want you to try this one out, three quarters. Set it up and solve that one as a division question. Three, two, one, go. Hey, welcome back. This might also be one that you're familiar with because um, three fourths or three quarters is equal to 0 0.75. So you might have already solved this type before. If not, there are the steps of how to solve it using long division. Here's another one, two thirds. I want you to try that one out and see what happens. Go for it. All right, that one was a little bit more tricky because this one is a repeating decimal. Um, there's no groups of three inside of two, but there's six groups of three inside of 20. It's 18, so we'll subtract, add another zero, and we get 18. And we repeat that process over and over and over. There's always going to be six groups of three inside of 20. And when you subtract, you always get a two. When we bring it down, well, that'll become 20, and the process will repeat. So if you solve that one using long division, you know that 2 thirds is 0 0.66. And we say that 66 six repeating, we can draw that line over top of the six because that is the part that's repeating. Then just a single digit of six is repeating over and over and over forever. All right. So that is repeating and terminating decimals. It's a very common thing. All repeating or terminating decimals can be written as fractions. All right, so we call them rational numbers. They're repeating or terminating decimals. Now, there is a quick way that you can tell if they are terminating or repeating, and this is the shortcut that I talked about in the introduction. All right? Okay. I'm going to race, and we're going to determine whether these are terminating and repeating. So I want you to use the old method that's super slow. <laughs> you do long division on all of these, and I will do my quick short method, and we'll see who can do it faster. Three, two, one, go. Bing, 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 done. Well, that's not fair. I had all the answers. That is very true. I did have the answers. But you can solve it almost this quickly if you know the shortcut. Let me tell you the shortcut, and then I'll show you how it works. The shortcut is really there's only two numbers that give you terminating decimals, twos and fives. And if you find the prime factorization of any of these numbers and they're made up of only twos and fives, then you have yourself a terminating decimal. Let me show you an example. So if we look at our first fraction, four over five, that one has a five. Its prime factor is five, right? The That's the only, prime factor of five is five, therefore this one is terminating. So terminating. The prime factorization of six is two times three. So although it does have a two in it, it's, it also has a three, which is a repeating decimal number. It is not made up of only twos and threes, or twos and fives, I'm sorry, so therefore it's repeating. Let's look at the number 20. 20 in prime factors is 2 times 2 times 5. 
that is made up of only twos and fives. Therefore, it is a terminating decimal. Seven is a prime number, not a two or a five. Therefore, it's a repeating decimal. And three over eight, eight as a prime factor is two times two times two. Those are all factors of either two or five. Therefore, it's a terminating decimal. So you can figure this out using just the denominator of numbers if you find the prime factorization. This is a shortcut that you may not use very much, but it's a fun little thing to have in your back pocket in case you are ever asked to quickly determine if fractions will turn into a terminating or a repeating decimal. So there you go. Nice little tool for you. I hope that that is a helpful um, shortcut. But before we move on too much, a word of caution, and that is the fractions need to be simplified. If we look at this one, 7 over 14, we might think, oh, 14, the prime factors of 14 are 2 times 7. Those are not repeat, those are the non um, terminating numbers, those are repeating numbers. But if we simplify them down to being 1 half, then we know that the the only factor is 2 and therefore it is a terminating decimal. 7 over 14 is 1 half. Um, so just something to be aware of. You can't just do this all the time. You do need to simplify the fraction into lowest terms uh, before you can do that. All right. Again, the shortcut's not the most helpful shortcut in the world, but I wanted you to be aware of it. All right, couple things to remember. Long division, you use it to convert fractions into decimals. We talked about two different types of decimals, repeating and terminating. Terminating decimals are ones that have prime factors of fives and twos. And if you're doing this using long division, keep adding those zeros until you recognize that it either terminates or it starts repeating. I hope that video was helpful for you. Have a wonderful day.